So let's talk a little bit about arrow functions for just like one second more. Um, this is functionally equivalent to saying function L, and then you also have to say dot bind this. Extremely similar, right? I guess you don't even have to do this, do you? Nope, you don't. But um, what I'm getting at here is, excuse me, um, is that when you do an arrow function as opposed to just say, like writing out the function keyword and all that, is that it, it uh, inherently binds to whatever context you're already in. It takes in the ambient context, right? And the reason why like I, I um, by habit do that bind to this is that a lot of times you're going to say things like this dot set state or this dot whatever, right? Like you have to refer to that um, component fairly often. So um, having that con context set is very helpful because if you don't set that context, what is this going to be? This is going to be results, right? Like it's going to be the, the object or the array that the um, map was called on. So if you're getting like weird context errors, that's something that you should probably look at. But as long as you're using arrow functions, it should not really be a problem. Um, but yeah, context is super important and very easy to screw up with React. So we'll, we'll, we'll get in a little bit further, um, and we'll see even more of that. OK. Good to go. Any questions? Yeah. I can't hear you at all, sorry. Do I need the what? Oh, do you need the return? Uh, you know what, in this particular case, she asked me, do I need the return statement? Um, I think you could do this. This can be dangerous. Let's see how this works. OK, we compiled. Sweet. Yeah, so uh, good point. Thank you. Um, this also works if you don't have the um, curly braces. Um, it, there is an implicit return. So for those of you familiar with like CoffeeScript, um, I think there are, there are obviously other languages that do it. Um, if you have like a one-liner, it's, it automatically returns whatever your, the result of your one-liner is. So in this particular case, it's that piece of JSX. It's kind of cool, kind of cute. If you're doing like a really short map, it's really cool to do that. Um, but f like in three minutes, we're going to update this to be much longer, and that is no longer useful. Yeah. USB stick, who's got it? Right there? Can you? Pass it to someone that needs it. <laughs> Any, anyone else need the USB stick but never saw it? You didn't? Question. Oh, yeah. What's your question? Uh, so how do you debug this, bug this if it's all being compiled down into something where I can add breakpoints into it? How do you debug this when you, it's being compiled down into something that you can't debug? Um, typically, you're going to use source maps, okay. right? That, that's the only way. I didn't set it up here. Good question, though. And like any sort of. Do, do you know who wanted this? Uh, it was this guy over here. Raise your hand. Oh, you got one. OK, I'll just take it. Thanks, man. Uh, anyone else? When, once we get to the break, um, these will be available up here. Cool. So I'm going to put this back the way it was because, yeah, we're going to change it here in just a sec. Good comments, though. Anyone else? Nope. OK. OK, let's go to movie, con movie container. Let's save this as well. OK, movie container. I recognized afterwards that I had called everything after movies. Um, but in reality, I'm showing you a bunch of TV series. Naming's hard. 
Okay. Require React, you're going to see a lot of that. But just know that Babel is smart enough to only include React once. You're not actually pulling in the React code that many times. OK, so if you're following along and you have, um, you have the code, um, I'm going to put in two lines for the OMDB client and um, pick the one that's working for you. I imagine Wi-Fi is still not working. Is that true? No? OK. I assume not, because it just doesn't, so. Um, you can also use the fake OMDB client, OK? I'm on like a normal, like I'm a, I have a wire here, so I'm just going to keep going with the actual client. But if you don't have Wi-Fi, then go ahead and use the fake OMDB client and just comment out the one that you don't need. By the way, I made a big donation to the guy that runs these servers because we're going to hammer his APIs. <laughs> but he was telling me he serves like millions of requests a day, so I think we're, we're OK. We're a drop in the bucket. OK, That's, this all should look pretty familiar for you. You're going to say module.exports equals movie container. OK. You're going to say constructor taking props, super props. OK, and you're going to say this dot state equals an object. We're going to put in a movie. And it's just going to be an empty object. So kind of to hammer back on this, uh, this pattern of state versus props, um, a lot of times your state comes from an API, right? That that's, seems pretty straightforward. And, and it is no different in this particular case. So when the object is constructed for the first time, it will not have any data, right? It will not have yet reached out to the API. So you need to give React, because like, React is going to render before it calls the API, right? Because we want our users to see something, then call the API, and then render everything. So it's that kind of progressive enhancement, right? It makes it feel really fast, even though you know, they're not actually seeing any real data till later. So we need to give React, it's like, OK, here's fake stuff to make do until you actually get real data back. Cool. And that's what this initial state business is. When you're actually writing like um, not ES6 um, React, you're going to say get initial state. And that's going to be a function that's like built into like non ES6 React. OK. So we're going to look at another life cycle method, which I haven't actually talked about yet. So let's t take a break and talk about that. Um, React has a life cycle. React component has a life cycle. It, ha it has the initial state, which in this particular ca case is covered by the constructor. Then it has a whole bunch of other ones, and only some of them are used part of the time. So one that you're going to use a bunch is component did mount. That is, means that the component has rendered for the first time, and it is visible on the page. So it's visible on the page. Now go do things, OK? This is typically where you're going to make API calls, right? Because you want React to put stuff on the page and then go find your data. But there's also one called component will mount, which is before it mounts. So if you, I don't know, for whatever reason you needed your data to be there before you rendered, this is a bad idea. Like I'm saying it out loud, don't do it. but. So component will mount will run before then. It'll wait for that function to return, and then it'll mount your component. So yeah, um, component will mount, com will receive props, or will update props. There's a bunch of them. Um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind that there are these reserved method names for React. I think component did mount is the only one that we use. There's also component did unmount, um, which is useful 
if you have like an event listener and then you don't want to leak memory, so you unattach all of your event listeners when your component's about to be taken off the page. OK, so here we're going to make our database, or sorry, database, our API call. OMDB.get. Going to give it an ID of this.props.id. OK. And we're going to use our fancy pants arrow function again. So in this particular case, the, um, the context will be important, right? I'm going to say this dot set state. Um, movie data. Let's just put some space there so you can see what's going on. Okay. So pretty straightforward. O OMDB goes out, gets some information from the API, and then it calls this dot set state, which as you can imagine is going to change this stuff up in here and re-render it um, accordingly. So this is an important distinction to make. Um, yes, you have access to your state. You could say this dot, so let's just pretend this is gone. You can say this dot state equals dot movie equals data, right? But why, why don't we do this? This will update the data. But now um, React has no idea that your data changed, right? It's, it has no object observable or anything like that. So React needs to be informed, hey, I changed stuff. Please go do things about it. So that's why this won't work, right? Because you'll change the data, but React won't re-render. So that's why we do this. We say this dot set state. We're using this kind of like um, proxy. I don't want to say proxy, but it's kind of a, a a setter, right? That this way your your data also gets updated, um, and then React will know to re-render itself. So set state will merge your data in. So let's say if I had like you know other thing in here. Um, this would only overwrite movie, right? It's, it's, it is smart about how it merges it, merges it in. You can say this dot replace state, and as you might guess, this will totally wipe everything out and just put that new object in. Questions so far? Yeah, back there. I can't hear you. Yeah, you can come to the microphone. I'll just delete this since not useful for anybody. Uh, what what I was saying is set state looks like a setter, but is it a setter, uh, setter and Nekma script six setter? You can't use um, an equal form with it now. Um. I mean, not as far as I know. It's not built into React. You would have to write your own layer on top of it. OK. It would Thanks. be super cool, though. <laughs> sure. Everyone get that question? So this is not like one of those new fancy getters and setter for ES6 or ES5, I think they're in. Yeah. No, this is, this is just pure React function, functionality, rather. OK. OK, let's give it a render function. Right now, we're just trying to get stuff on the page, so we don't actually really care too much what it looks like. So we're just going to put up the image. What's that? <laughs> props is. Props is. Pr I'm, I didn't want to. Right. Um, it'll, well, let, me, let me explain a little bit and then see if I answer your question. Um, so he's asking about props and how it's predefined, I think, right? Yeah. So, 
something I failed to, to describe when I was going through and creating this presentation is that the paradigm of writing React is you assume that all of your data that you want is already there, um, which is kind of a cool thought. You don't write the code as like, how am I going to get the data marshaled in here and then show it? And like, like, if it's in this state, then how do I modify it? And if it's in another state, how do I change that? Um, with React, you just say, like, I assume my data is going to get there. And it's typically by props that's going to be passed in through the parent. So it's already going to be defined for you. Um, and like, this will get more and more um, obvious as we go forward. In this particular case, we're actually kind of doing a bad thing because there's no default value for poster, which is not a good thing. So this will actually make image requests for things that are not there. Right? It's going to ask for um, something undefined. But this is just kind of for demonstration purposes that actually, you know what? We could even do this. Hold on. I had a smart idea. I'll just we'll give it one, right? We can say poster. And then I think I have stuff in public slash img slash fake one dot jpg. That should work. Right? So now it actually will. Now it will have a, uh, some sort of fallback. Um, this is also not a good idea, because then you're going to request two images right in a row. So um, also not a good idea, but that's OK. OK, so let's, uh, let's see if we're crashing here. No, we're good. Refresh. Oh, OK. So yeah, obviously, we haven't rendered this yet. Um, make sure I talked about all my points that I wanted to get through. Um, anyway, and we're going to fix this hot mess here in a sec anyway. OK, index.jxx. OK. So let's come back into here. We're going to say var movie container equals require um, movie container. Okay, pulling in all that that new componentry, and we're just going to render that that business out. So let's get rid of everything here in the map right here. So we're inside this return statement in the map. And we're just going to throw around a movie container for all of these things. I'm going to say id equals l.imdbid. Make sure you get the capitalization correct. It's obviously, it's particular. So, um, and what did I do wrong here? Oh, I got to close my tag as well. Uh, people kind of ask me, like, that's a weird way to write HTML, right? It is. I know. Uh, it's kind of a JSX thing that you can have these components that you pass down, like, 40 things, right? It's super pain in the butt. So um, you, you just put them out on different lines. That so makes it a lot more readable. OK. So to his point over here, we are passing down props now, right? This should feel familiar that um, now this movie container is going to have access to um, this ID prop. OK, so let's just take a look over here again, right? Um, we're getting this dot props ID dot ID, right? Or like what I was talking about earlier, we assume that data is already going to be there, and then we're going to figure out later how to get the data there. So. Now let's refresh this, see if it does anything. Yeah, check that business out. Cool. So let's take a look at our console, make that a little bigger. Notice it's saying, hey, you, make sure you're, um, when you're repeating over something like doing a map like I just showed you, Make sure you give me a unique key so I can tell when you're just reorganizing things and when you're actually changing an entire different node, right? React wants to be able to control, um, keep track of that so it can be, do the most smart updates it can. So let's go back over here. And on index.jsx, we're also just going to give it a key real quick. 
So we're going to say l.idmb id as well, right? That's fine. So save. And then we should be able to come back over here, and that warning is gone. So cool. Um, Can you go back to your code? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So um, now we're going to get into the container layout um, paradigm. Yeah, in the back. What about it? You could. You could say this.props.key and just only use key and not ID. That'd be fine. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. I, I hear someone talking, and I, I don't know who it is, and nor can I hear you. I still can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> the, static, I, the, the static data for the poster, mm -hmm. we need to load, or, or at least mine, um, needs the public images. Oh. So how should we stick that in? Yeah, let me show you that real quick. And then I, I saw your hand, I'll get you in a sec. Um, if you're using the fake IMDB client, which I'm not, I'm using the, the actual API. Um, you're going to have to do something like this. Um, hey, let's use template ones. Those are fun. Um, you're going to have to say public slash img slash dollar and put those curly braces around that. So let me just turn this on like you guys have it. You f people, sorry. Um, save. And now this should be pulling in locally. And yeah, notice that the, now they're like all mixed together because it's just randomly shuffling movies together. So, but all the same, you should be able to be getting images now. Yeah, does that fix it for most of you? Cool. Um, and then I'll briefly touch on, I was going to touch on this later, but we can talk about it now. This is a ES6 template string. So how many of you are really sick of lots of quotes and lots of plus signs when you're doing string concatenation? Yeah? There's got to be more of you. Either that or you don't write enough JavaScript. <laughs> so this, this kind of solves it, right? So essentially you're saying, so make sure you're using backticks, right? Not single quotes, but backticks, as in like it's on the same key as the tilde. And then you can use this dollar sign um, curly brace syntax, and then that will actually be in a JavaScript expression inside of there. So in this particular case, we're just pulling in this .state.movie.poster. Cool. You had your hand up over here? OK, cool. Anyone else? Yeah. Aliasify? Yeah, it seems that it's missing. I cloned the repo last night, and it's not on the package dot JSON. Mm -hmm. But when I try to use it, uh, it's missing. And the one that is using it is the um, sorry, one second, the OMDB client file. Oh, is it? Is that is someone else having that problem as well? Oh, interesting. I wonder if I did that and not remembered it. Let's take a look. Oh, oh do you have to actually go inside of uh, OMDB client? ls node modules 
aliasify this one right here. Okay, so if you actually are trying to find out, like follow along with the real uh, database client, just make sure you cd into node modules, omdb dash client, and then say uh, npm install aliasify, that one right there. Sorry? Oh, can you? OK. You can do it from the package level, apparently. <coughs> Thank you, by the way. But this, if you're using like the fake local one, um, you, don't need, you don't need to do that. So. OK. So let's move on to movie tile layout. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say this is a somewhat novel approach in that um, I haven't seen many people write too much about this, this uh, pattern of writing React. Um, and it's, yeah, you, you separate your behavior from your layout. Um, and this proves really useful down the road. Uh, uh, to give you a real live example, that would be um, we are writing the new mobile web version of Reddit. And just think of like, for those of you that use Reddit, there's like a, um, not a comment, what the hell you want to call it, like a, like a post, right? Like a link or of some sort, right? Um, think of how many different ways that you can display a link on Reddit, right? Like it can be displayed like in the list, it can be displayed differently inside of its own like comment page. Um, they can then be linked outside using embeds, right? It's the same data displayed differently. That often has the same sort of behavior, right? You can comment, you can upvote, you can downvote, you can give gold, right? And that, that functionality never actually changes. The only thing that's changing is the layout. But it's super annoying to have to reprogram that behavior for every single different layout you have. And if you're putting them each in their own individual components, you have to duplicate that same, um, that same behavior. So instead, you can use this, what, what I've heard dubbed the container layout paradigm. I'm sure there's other more scientific -y ways of saying it. But basically, you're trying to separate your behavior and your layout. And then you just feed the layout into the behavior. So we have movie container, which is going to be our container, which is going to house all the behavior. In our particular case, the only behavior is actually going out and getting the, um, fetching the data. And then we're going to have two different layouts. Uh, one's going to be a tile layout. One's going to be a list layout. So movie tile layout. We're going to say var react equals require react. OK, class movie tile layout extends react.component. OK. Thank you, capital C. We, we don't need any state for this layout. And if you need state in your layout, you might be doing something wrong. I'm not saying that's going to be completely true. but um, So we don't need the constructor function. So you can just leave it off. OK? And now we're going to say, Um, this particular part is just for getting like a fake movie poster if there's not a real movie poster to put with it. Okay. We're just going to use a ternary for this. Because the IMDB database is really annoying and it gives you back n, n slash a if there's no poster. public img slash fake. And then we're just going to give it a random number, math.floor, math.random times 5. Sorry, not inside of there. Times 5 plus 1. 
Jpg. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you didn't see in public, there's an IMG folder. There's a bunch of pictures. There's also some fake ones as well. So that's what it's doing. It's just picking out a random number and sticking it on there. Okay. And we're going to return a component. And yeah, just let's go ahead and go through it. We'll at least go through this one, and then we might just end up copying and pasting the other layout because they're largely, largely the same, just some different CSS kind of differences. Does someone have a question? Does so anyone in here use uh, the BEM uh, CSS syntax? A couple of you. That's what I'm doing here. If it looks weird, it's because it looks weird. <laughs> but it is useful. If Sorry. Yeah, would be tile image container. So um, if you're going to give it actually feed it raw style, instead of giving it CSS class, you actually have to give it an object, just FYI. And it looks kind of weird because you have the outer um, uh, curly braces, and then you also have the inner curly braces, which, which represents the object literal. That's, a, that's why there's two of them here. I'm also feeding it um, a background image instead of doing like a IMG tag um, so it can be like responsively sized because the images are not always uniform. <coughs> okay, and then we're also going to use this uh, template tag again or template string rather. Okay. I also wouldn't super suggest this in production, doing the um, CSS trick that I'm doing here, because it's not super accessible. Uh, OK. You, can, you may have also noticed that you can do like self-closing div tags. Like anything can be self-closed in JSX, just FYI. Okay, div class name equals movie tile underscore underscore info. Okay, and then you're going to do this dot props dot title. Except I actually wanted this to be an H1. Okay. Okay, then it's also going to have a subtitle. That's going to be the year. Um, and then here you're also going to, you're going to put it inside of parentheses for style purpose, right? Those parentheses, like literally, we want parentheses on the page, right? Okay. And div class name equals movie tile underscore underscore stars. We're going to do like a star rating component here in, in like a couple minutes, probably after the break. And, but we'll just put like a little pl placeholder in the meantime. OK, hopefully. And then we also have to put the module exports down here at the bottom. Module. Exports equals uh, movie tile layout. Cool. OK, so let's go back to JSX index. People pretty well caught up now. Is anyone still following along? 
index. Just come up here to the top, require in the movie tile layout. Movie tile layout equals require movie tile layout, right? And inside the render function here, instead of we're going to give it a layout, right? Um, in this particular case, we're just going to directly feed movie tile layout. Okay. That's all you need to do here. Just require it up here, feed it in here. Okay. Then we're going to go to movie container. Rather than having this dumb business over here, um, we are going to Ooh. Can be almost as simple. This dot props dot layout and oh yeah, I forgot about this. So we're gonna do a spread, which is kind of neat. This dot state dot movie. Cool. Make sure everything's saved. Yeah. So, a couple of interesting things happening here. We have this dot props dot layout. As you can see, um, React is now smart enough to be able to do this. It was not previously smart enough to know how to do this. Um, when I'm saying this, I mean this dot props dot layout. Um, you can actually like pass in like namespace to all, and or just like layouts from an object. Um, as long as it has dots in there, it knows like, oh, okay, I need to go look inside of an object to find the layout I'm looking for, or the component I'm looking for. Um, something that's worth noting is there's a convention in React. If your first letter is lowercase, it assumes that I am literally going to put that uh, word out there. So for example, if it's like div, right? It assumes I'm going to put a div out there, right? But if I have div like this, it assumes that there's a div component that I created. So that um, React actually relies on that, that uh, convention. It did not previously, but it does now. OK. So that explains this, um, the spread operator. So this is actually a JSX feature, but it's also an ES6 um, feature as well, it's just not this particular application. So we, we're getting in this.state.movie, right? Which is we're pulling in up here, right up here, right? And then the spread operator says, like, I don't actually want to give it the literal movie object. I want to take the movie object and spread it across um, as the props. So this would be um, equivalent to um, like, you know, what I would say, like poster, right? Poster um, this dot props dot poster, right? And going so on and so forth for all of those. Okay, so save and let's go over here and refresh. And we're having some issue here with images, which I probably messed up. But all the same, you can see like there's a new layout here, and that layout is being applied.